we're back, Defender stuff. Uh, we've been out this weekend. I actually convinced Dan to get a 4x4. So he's got a Discovery 1, and we went out and did a little test today. Went to Elan Valley, did Strata Florida, did a bunch of other lanes, so that's why it's filthy. It was really fun, I'll put a few little clips in. I'm just so into them right now. So into four by fours. We've got loads of work to do. So let me show you, tell you what we're doing. I'm gonna start working from the top down. I've got the back to do the build on, but I need to get all the wiring done before I start putting like panels in. Up top, we've got solar panels to go in. I've got a CB radio antenna to wire in and I've got lights to wire in. So that's just tons. We've got tons to do. So I gotta do all that, get it in, get it in the ceiling drill some holes and then that's the wiring for the exterior done. We have here a 100 watt solar panel and a charge controller. This was kind of tricky because this gap here from there to there is the only place I can put a solar panel. I've measured it and there was not a lot of solar panels I could get that fit in here so hopefully it fits. It's gonna be very close. Look at that bad boy. All right, so this is a 100 watt, I think it's a Renology one. Renology? Renology. It's a monocrystalline, whatever that means. I'm not really a solar guy, but I did a bit of research and I found out that this, with that, would work with this and my battery and it will keep it topped up. So let's get the traction boards off and see if it fits. Oh my God. <laughs> Might need to move the roof tent back a smidge, which sounds easy, but it's not. So annoying. I do actually have a little bit of room at the back to work with. So I'm gonna have to shift it back. We're in. That's where it's gonna live. It's tight. But it works. I don't want to bolt that in just yet because I need to drill the holes for the cable, right? But I want to do all the drilling at the same time and I want to get all the wiring done at the same time because I don't want to have like 18 holes in the roof. So we have spotlights. So these are like aux beam spotlights. I'm gonna have four on the front, two on the back. So we'll ignore the back for now. We have the two cables from the solar panel, positive, negative. And we have this, which is my radio antenna for the CV radio. So the antenna wiring, which is one cable, the lights, which is four cables, and we have the solar panel, which is two cables. If I can get away with it, I wanna do it in one hole. Also, cause I don't want anyone to see the wires, I want them to be all tucked out the way. So I might just go like near here, sort of like where one of the legs are for the roof racks, so then it's sort of like hidden with that. I guess my next step, is to get the lights mounted and to get the antenna mounted and then get them all wires together and then my brain can make sense of it because it can't at the moment. Freshies. This wiring harness is a lifesaver. There's like relays, switches, fuses, everything you need to wire in the two spotlights. Shout out to Auxbeam for hooking me up with these lights. I will put the uh, the product there. I thought they were sort of like the best looking lights. I think light bars are a bit, not my thing. Orcs Beam do light bars if you wanna get light bars as well, but the pods look sick. I think I'm literally just gonna drill a hole straight in my roof rack and bolt them in. So on the back there is like a bracket with a hole, like that. Cause if I put them under here, I reckon they'll whistle loads in the wind. So I'm gonna do four of them, space them out equally. So I'm gonna figure that out and then mark it up, drill it, bolt them in. All 
right, this is what I mean. I've just spent like half an hour trying to measure these and figure out where I want them to go. I've taken the whole width of the roof rack and then I've got four lights. So if you ever want to work out how to equally space something out between a gap, just add one. So if you want four lights, divide the total gap by five. 140 mil, because it's 140 centimeters. Divided by five is 2.8. So there would be one, two, three, four. So if you divide by four, you'd only have three spots. Whereas if you divide by five, you get four spots. So I've done that, but you see the big lines, that would be where they'd be. And I'm looking at it and I reckon there's a lot of dead space on the left and the right. So I think I'm gonna change it. What I might do is put the first one where the curve starts and then divide the rest and try and space that out. So let's do that and see what it looks like. All right, yeah, that's the one. The X's mark where I'm gonna put the spots. All four holes are drilled. So we're gonna bolt the lights up and this is where it's gonna look cool. I think it looks sick. So, got my four cables coming out and I need to figure out where to go with them. So I've taken the four lights off and here is what we're gonna do. So this is the plug on the end. I'm not gonna use it, so I'm just gonna snip that off. And then I'm gonna run all four wires because all four are gonna be run off the same button. So I'm gonna run four of these into one cable. So I'm gonna splice them and then have four into one basically. So then I only have to put one hole through in the Defender. Because if I do four holes with the plugs, it's just gonna be a massive hole. So now we have four ends. That's twin core as well. So I'm just gonna strip this back and then join all four of them into that one. All right, so that one's joined to that one, which is joined to that one, which is joined to that one. This is all really rough, I'm just testing it out. I've sent the cable in here, connects to a plug, goes into the relay and into that. So if I hit this switch, we have lights. Hey! So at least I know I've wired that up, right? Yes! Lights are working, but we've still got a lot more work to do because that's just temporary. They're wired in parallel, by the way, not series. So positives go to positives, negatives go to negatives. Easy as that. They're, they're pretty bright. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna route all the cabling down there across here. And then I've got this thing, which is like an aerodynamic, I don't know, there's two compression glands on there. Waterproof rated, so I'm gonna send my cables through there. And then at least that way it looks sort of like, not OEM, but it doesn't look bodged. The only place I can really get to to drill it in is like in this space in the rack. So it's got to go here. And then it's so dark and shadowed under there from the roof tent that you won't see the wires coming into the back of it either. Next thing to do is to drill a hole in the roof. But where I've chosen to put it in is actually where the headliner is in the cab. So I need to take the headliner off. So there's some screws in the sun visors. So I'd imagine they're holding it in. They're gross. We've got a bunch of clips, this light assembly. There's two eight mil bolts there. And then this. And then there's two flyers there. I hate flyers, oh my God. Door seals. In the way. And then some trim clips. Come on. This is sweaty work. Ah! Bitch. All right, we have bare metal. That's what we want. So I've marked the middle point of the rack, which would be the middle of the truck. And that's where I'm gonna go. That's gonna live there. Hole can be inside it. And then the wires just come in. Okay, no turning back. Mm. 
Nice. Next up on the wiring list, I've got a CB radio. We've got this Thunderpole T600. And this is so I can talk to people when we go on trips. So you have a little, uh, little walkie talkie thing, but it's like hardwired in. Pretty handy to have, cause like, especially when you're going off roading and stuff, you kind of just want to call stuff out or like chat shit. So uh, we're going to do that. And for that we have an aerial which goes on the top of the roof. And from there we have a mount and that just basically screws into there. This is our next. Our next job. Shut up. Come down. This is the mount and it just clamps to the gutter like that. The only thing is these two screws just go straight into the gutter and it's sort of, I don't know, this gut is not that strong. So what I've done is I've just got a little, little piece of alley to just sit like that and just spread the load a bit. We're on, it's solid. Sat on that little alley piece, nice. But what I reckon will happen is the aerial's gonna like vibrate and it will do that. So I'm just gonna put a bit of fabric tape here. Ain't going anywhere. And now we have the aerial. This is gonna look cool. All right, let's get out through the roof. Look how cool that looks. truck now. Look at that. <whistles> Let's make these cables disappear. Ow! Solar panel left to go. That's it. And then you're wonky. Then once I've done that, I can tidy up all the wiring, get the wiring in. Done. But before we can do the solar panel, you know how it's got like a silver edge? This silver aluminium, not a fan of it. It stands out. You can see it. Everything on the truck is black. So Andy's on his way. Um, he's just grabbing some black spray paint and then he's going to come here and then we're going to paint that. And then once it's painted, it can go on and then we can finalize the roof. It just seems so basic, like all of this stuff, but just there's so many little things to figure out. But once it's done, it's done. So let's wait for Andy to get here and we'll paint that up. Hey, up then, Shaggy. How are we? The goods. All sprayed up. Let's go. Matte black, baby. Yeah, it looks bad, doesn't it? Yeah, looks like a, I don't know, reception whiteboard. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, like a black chalkboard. We can do spray the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Still work, won't it? Yeah. I ain't got any food. I had to eat chicken super noodles earlier, and they are the mankest thing I've ever eaten in my life. After having top quality ramen. Yeah. I can't believe I used to like eat them when I was a kid. They actually taste of nothing. Should we wipe it down first? <laughs> Nah. <laughs> Unbelievable, Jeff. Nice. Spot on. Fresh out the slammer. Fingerprints all over it now. Yep. Mm. Ready? Three, two, one. I reckon we connect it, then drop it down. Yeah. Positive and negative off the solar. And then we just have our twin core. So we're just gonna join them together. And then, negative one to you. Oh yeah. Sounds fine. One to you. Oh yeah. Will big boy get over both of them? Oh god, I. Perfect. Beautiful. All right, this has taken us hours. <clears throat> but we're almost there. So we just outlined it where it's going to go because we can't turn this upside down to put the silicone on the back of here. Because all the cables are so perfectly round and tight. 
So we've outlined it, so now I know I need to run a bead just on the inside of that silver. So we're gonna run that windscreen bond, bond it, and then when it's stuck down, we're just gonna self-tap it. Yeah, a little nipper self-tap. Yeah, nice. Go quite thick with it. Oh whoa, my God, whoa, there whoa, she whoa. goes. <laughs> I'm not even pressing the trigger. God, oh God, I'm gonna run out. Oh my God. This is gonna be tough. This has been a mish, hasn't it? Correct. But it will be worth it. You're charging your phone for free. That's true. Free power. Certain it. For our solution to bolt down the solar panel, we did have these fancy solar panel bracket mounts, but they raise it up too high and it looks weird. So we're just going to do a flat L bracket. Big cock thought of an idea. Again. Andy thought of this, so smart. <laughs> uh, but they're too big, so we're just going to cut them down, paint them black, do it. Job is done. What do you reckon? So good. Sick, isn't it? Actually, it's sick. I'm so glad we sprayed that black. So, we've done the bracket there, CB antenna there, and then the pod lights. Old aux beams. Which actually look pretty good, don't they? Yeah, really good. And then, that is the only bit of wiring you can see there. That was two days of work. Absolute pig. All right, we're back. And to finalize this electrical escapade I've been on for the past couple of days, we have another set of lights and I'm gonna do them on the back here. Cause it's useful for like reversing in the dark, you can put reverse lights on. And like when I'm camping and stuff, I'm normally like getting stuff out of here and like doing stuff around this area. So having lights on the back is kind of handy. We have the same lights as the front, I've got another two, um, and we are going to try and open this box. Pod light, and I reckon I'm gonna go there. Got to make a template for this corner and then put a hole in it, and then I'll flip that round, use it on the other side, and then I know that they're in exactly the same space. And then we want a hole for the cable as well. The cable hole needs a grommet. So we snip the end off this plug because that ain't going to go through the hole. Just drill a hole in the grommet. Just feed that through. Now I somehow need to bolt that down. Voila. So this is a template I use on the other side. So we flip around and then it'll work. And I'll be in the same spot. I've got the ladder in the way this side, so it's a bit annoying, but it's not the end of the world. Measure once, cut once. Grommet, cable in the hole. She's in, nut and bolt for the back. Sick. Exactly the same spot, oh, that looks pretty good. Right, it's getting wired up. All right, magic button. Hey, they're both on. Look at that. That's so bright. We've got front spotlights, rear spotlights, CB antenna, and the solar panel wired in. So that is the electrics done from the outside of the car. So I don't need to bring anything else in, which means I can start lining all this with wood and actually start the build. We've got a Scotland trip in two weeks. 
I'm in Alia doing the NC500 and it's like 2000 miles. I wanna get this done before then. So I'm kind of flat out with this and I've got a lot to do. So I'm gonna be pumping out Defender videos in the next couple of weeks. Before I end this video, I wanna wait until nighttime because I wanna test these lights. So I will see you when it's nearly dark. <laughs> this looks sick. So I probably need to go for a drive and figure out the placement because I don't know where they're pointing at the moment, but they're pretty bright. Um, so we've got the fronts and then the rears. These are actually spotlights, so <laughs> they're making a spot, but I might see if Orcs Beam have got any floodlights and just swap them out. Yeah, if you stand here, they are super bright and they're not like, I don't know, they're not super obvious. Also as well, I've tidied up all the wiring. So this is now final. I kind of regret not drilling another hole in the rack for the cable. It's kind of annoying that it goes over. Oh, it's been like a day. How is there cobwebs already? Anyway, yeah, it doesn't really matter because you can't see it, but it would just be nice if it tucked in instead of going over. But I just didn't want to drill loads of holes in the rack. Roots all in here with some conduit and then just little zip ties, tie it in place. And then here's like the only messy part but it has to happen, so still can't see anything. This video was one of the biggest pain in the asses to film. It might look easy, and I might have made it look easy with the editing and stuff, but this actually took me days. And it's just, I came up with so many different ideas for like different ways to route things and how to go and stuff. Changed my mind loads. And yeah, took a lot of brain power, <laughs> put it that way. I'm really glad it's done. I'm gonna go home, have a beer, go to bed. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. <laughs> so bad at outros. See you later.